In this video, the Feynman method will be applied to integrals of rational functions. So to use Feynman's method, we have to add a parameter to the integral. Since we're essentially wanting to take the partial derivative of the integral with respect to this parameter, we need to add this parameter and hope that taking the partial derivative simplifies the resultant integral. So as you can see, we've added the parameter to the numerator. We hope that taking the partial derivative will somehow simplify the integral. If we insert the ansatz that taking the partial derivative of the integral with respect to b eliminates the denominator, we'll obtain that the partial derivative of i of b with respect to b will give us the integral of f rather than the a integral of a rational function. If f of x of b is of a uh, simple form, we'll be able to integrate the function and then resultantly uh, take the antiderivative with respect to b and obtain i of b. So if we follow out this ansatz and solve a partial differential equation, will obtain that f of x of b is equal to e to the power of g of x times b plus c of x plus a term d of x. So if f of x of b is of this form, we need to know under what conditions will this function be easy to integrate. Well, we can use a couple of facts. First of all, e to the power of a polynomial is only integrable if the power is less or equal to quadratic. Secondly, we know that d of x is only integrable under certain conditions. We don't know specifically what they are, but we do know that as long as the integral of d of x is explicit and the degree of the polynomial of g of x is less than or equal to quadratic, f of x of b will be integrable. We also know that if you, if g of x or c of x is a polynomial inside of a natural logarithm, we'll eliminate the exponential and be left with a polynomial being integrated. As we already know, polynomials are also integrable. So g of x and c of x need to be either quadratic or less polynomial, or they need to be the natural log of a polynomial. So here's an example. If we have the numerator of the function being equal to x minus 1, and the denominator being equal to the natural log of x, then we can run it through the formula we derived and see after substitution that f of x of b needs to be equal to e to the power of b times the natural log of x minus 1, which of course is equal to x to the power of b minus 1. So here's an example where it's the natural log of a polynomial, and as you can see, you're left with a polynomial being integrated, which is of course a lot simpler to integrate than the original f of x over g of x. As for a second example, if the numerator is e of x minus e to the power of 2x and the denominator is x, then we obtain f of x of b equal to e to the power of b times x minus e to the power of 2 times x. Once again, this function is a lot easier to integrate than the original one. There are also several and mostly uh, similar examples that can also be integrated. For instance, 1 minus cosine of x squared over x squared can be integrated. We also have 1 over x squared plus 1 and cosine of 2x minus cosine of 3x over x squared. And finally, sine of x over x. There are countless other examples as well. But as you can see, they're all rational functions. 
and taking the partial derivative with respect to a suitable parameter eliminates the denominator in each of these cases. As for the sine of x over x example, uh, we've actually covered this in a previous video. So I've put a link in the description if you're interested in looking at that.